Welcome back to BNG Hockey, where it's always black and gold. Don Sweeney made one of his best moves of the season, bringing back Tuka Rask on a team-friendly deal. But this team still needs to add a bit more if they want to be a legit playoff contender. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the players the Bruins have been rumored to be interested in, we'll look at their season so far, I'll give you my thoughts on the players, and we'll talk about what it might take to acquire them. Let's get started. Before we talk about who the Bruins would be interested in trading for, let's talk about what the Bruins actually have to trade. The most obvious of all their trade chips is still Jake DeBrusque. Even though he was playing better before he went on COVID protocol, I still think he wants out and I still think the Bruins are looking to move him. And he's still going to get you some value out there on the trade market. Other than him, there's not too many players that make sense to move. Maybe some depth guys like John Moore or Chris Wagner or even Zach Senishin who also requested a trade, but those guys won't move the needle too much on a trade deadline move. Other than that, the Bruins could dip into their prospect pool. You never know what other teams see in some guys that you might not see too much in, but their high-end prospects I think they'll want to keep because the Bruins still have to keep in mind here that they don't have too much young talent coming up the pipe. So guys like Fabian Lysel, I would say, are pretty much untouchable at this point. That goes for their first-round pick as well. I would be really surprised if the Bruins moved their first-round pick, unless it's for a higher-end player, and it really makes sense to pull the trigger. Their second, third, and fourth-round picks are probably a lot more likely to be in play. The first player we're going to talk about is actually a guy I've brought up in Jake DeBrus' trade rumors in the past, and that's 23-year-old Kyler Yamamoto. He's signed for the rest of this season with a cap hit of $1.175 million, and he'll be an RFA after this season. In 34 games this year, he has 7 goals, 5 assists for a total of 12 points. So the points totals don't exactly jump off the page, especially knowing that most of the time he's playing with McDavid or Dreisaitl, so he should probably be doing a lot better. But I think playing a smaller role here with the Bruins would actually help him, and he still can develop because he's only 23. He's a bit on the smaller side, so I know the Bruins don't love that, and they already have quite a bit of that, honestly, in their bottom six, but this is a guy who I think could pop with a new team, and if he had a little less pressure on his shoulders, I think he would actually thrive. And obviously, the Oilers have been interested in DeBrus for a long time now. I don't know if this necessarily makes sense as a one-for-one -one deal, but I think it's a very good building block for these two teams to work on, centered around Jake DeBrus and Kyler Yamamoto. This next player is somebody the Bruins have been interested in for quite some time. And that's 24-year-old winger Lawson Kraus. He's currently playing for the Arizona Coyotes and having one of his best seasons yet. He's also signed at a very reasonable cap hit of $1.533 million, and he'll be an RFA after this season. Similar to Kyler Yamamoto, this is a guy you can keep around long-term, and it's always more tempting to GMs having a guy with team control being an RFA. This season, in 32 games with the Coyotes, Kraus has 9 goals, 8 assists for a total of 17 points. Now, he is playing a ton of minutes because the Coyotes basically have no one. He would play a much smaller role with the Bruins. In fact, I think he would probably be on the fourth line if Nick Felino's healthy, but maybe you could switch them and he can play with Coyle. But this is a guy who brings size, physicality, speed, and a lot of skill. He was originally a first-round pick. I don't know if he's ever really going to hit that ceiling, but he can be a very good player on a good team playing in a depth role. Keeping that in mind, there will be plenty of other contending teams who will be interested in this player, thanks to his low cap hit and the fact that he's having a breakout season. Now, I personally think the Coyotes should keep this player so they have something to build around, but it would also be silly to not move him when his trade value is probably the highest it's ever going to be. Now, that being said, I wouldn't fall into that trap if I'm the Bruins. This is not the guy you move a first-round pick for, probably not even a second-round pick for. Maybe I move one of my lower-end prospects and do a one-for-one, -one, but if one of those other teams wants to get crazy with a Lawson Kraus deal, I hope the Bruins would just move on from him. Because as I said, he'd be playing a much smaller role, and as a whole over his career, the guy's kind of been a disappointment. But his size, speed, physicality, and versatility is something the Bruins desperately need in their bottom six. So if he comes at the right price, I would be interested. This next player would also bring quite a bit of versatility to the Bruins' bottom six, and that's forward Max Domi. He's a 26-year-old who can play both center and wing. He's played most of his career on the wing, but I actually think he's a bit more effective at center. But since he's played both, he's comfortable either way. He is signed to a pretty big cap hit at $5.3 million for the rest of this season, and then he'll be a UFA. So this would only be a rental for the Bruins. And honestly, I don't know if there's too many guys that make sense to move for this player one for one where the money would work. Maybe you could do a deal around a John Moore and throw in some picks and prospects so that you can not only be rid of John Moore's money, but you can also fit Domi into the fold. Now, I will say Domi's having a pretty impressive season for the role he's playing with the Blue Jackets. 
In 24 games, he has 8 goals and 8 assists for a total of 16 points. But sometimes he's playing under 10 minutes a game. So those numbers are really impressive. I don't know if he'd be playing a much bigger role here on the Bruins, but I could see him being a net front guy on the second power play, maybe getting some time playing with Charlie Coyle. And if he can put up those numbers playing less than 10 minutes, what can he do with the Bruins playing 15 minutes? So again, similar to Kraus, if the price is right, I would be interested in Domi, and he has been linked to the Bruins by some pretty big names like Elliot Friedman. This last player I was kind of surprised to see attached to the Bruins, but the more and more I think about it, the more and more I love it. And that's defenseman John Klingberg of the Dallas Stars. He's a 29-year-old currently making $4.25 million, but he is a UFA at the end of the season, so once again, like Domi, this would only be a rental, and he is due for a huge raise in pay, so I don't think he would be a Bruin for very long. But as a one-year rental, he would be a slam dunk of a pickup. In 27 games, Klingberg has a goal and 16 assists for a total of 17 points. He's been an all-star defenseman in the past and is a pretty well-known name around the league. So you're probably thinking, why are the Stars looking to move this guy? Well, actually, Klingberg has requested a trade, and that's because he hasn't been thrilled with how contract negotiations have been going. He should be a big part of this Dallas Stars team, and it sounds like they don't see him that way. But this is still a very good player, and even with all this drama, he's still producing. The only real downside to this is the Bruins have mainly been looking for a left-shot defenseman, and Klingberg is a right-shot defenseman. But he's so talented that I think we can all look past his handedness. Now, he could play the left side, but he hasn't really done that in his career, and it's not the worst thing in the world having a right side of McAvoy, Carlo, and Klingberg. And even though your left side would still struggle a little bit, your decor as a whole would be a lot better. And having Klingberg run your top power play with guys like Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak, he would put up insane numbers. He's already been one of the best power play quarterbacks in the league for a long time now. And then you can rest a guy like McAvoy a bit more, because especially in the playoffs, he's going to be playing so much, so you can let Klingberg run the power play, even though McAvoy's been good at that, and then McAvoy can focus more on playing 5-on-5. Five five. Same thing goes for a guy like Brandon Carlo. Carlo's best ability is his penalty killing. He can do that a lot more, and then guys like Klingberg and McAvoy can play more 5-on-5 five five and give Carlo some time to rest. Pretty much every team in the league is looking for a number one right shot defenseman, and the Bruins already have one, so they shouldn't get too crazy with a John Klingberg deal. But acquiring him would make their decor that much better and probably put them into elite level status when it comes to playoff contention. So I would definitely be interested in Klingberg, but I would like to see what the price is. And the fact that the Bruins are even looking at this type of player means that they really believe in their group and they're going to try and go for it once again this season. So let me know your thoughts on these players. Who are you most interested in and what would you offer up? Leave that down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big like. And if you haven't already, subscribe.